G'day guys, here we are at the number six angled support. Okay, same as always, let's find the footprint. We can see we've got from here to here, 120 millimeters, and from here to here is 90 millimeters. So, pretty easy, grab the rectangle, let's draw in 120,90, enter. Let's zoom in on that, push pull it up, what's the drawing say? 80 millimeters, so click once, eight zero, enter. All right. There's our overall size that we can start shaving things away. Now, we've done this before. We just need to take out that little channel down the bottom. So we'll grab the tape measure. We can see we need to come 16 millimeters in. Right. Um, we could do this a different way just to show you another way of going about things. We can use a pencil tool for this. I can click on that guide point, make sure I'm going straight up on the blue axis. I need to go up 15 millimeters. Then I can go straight across on the red axis, and I need to go 28, enter, and then just go straight down to the base. And there's that shape that needs to go through. So again here, I can't see if I've gone all the way through. So take that take that push-pull tool over, click on the back edge, and you know it's gone all the way through. Okay? Pretty easy. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky. Um, I find whenever there's an angle in a drawing, it's best to save the angles to last. Um, so I reckon we try and take out this channel in the middle first, remove that bit, and then we can do the angles, okay? Um, so we can see that the channel is separated by two blocks and they're 30 millimeters wide each. So I'll grab the tape measure and I'll just measure in 30 from each side and 30 from that way. And I'll just use the pencil lines to go straight up. I think we did something similar in one of the older drawings, didn't we? Probably, who knows. Okay, um, now we need to figure out where we're going to push this into. Now it doesn't actually tell us how deep it is. We're gonna to have to use a bit of maths again um, because we can see that the only information we get about the depth of that channel is that it's 10 millimeters past the end of that slope or the top of that slope, I guess you could call it. So we need to draw a line in, or we need to indicate where the top of that slope is. So we can see it's 80 millimeters from the back corner. So let's grab the tape measure. From here, we'll go eight zero, enter. There's that line. We'll tape that one across to 90, enter. Then we need to go 10 millimeters back from that line. We've gone 10 millimeters back. So all I'm gonna do now is grab the push-pull tool. And this is another great place where we can use the um, red arrow. So I can click on that face that I wanna push, go over to that guide point, hover over that, and it'll snap to that guide point and I know it's gone the perfect distance. That's really looking good. Now, whenever we're drawing a slope, we need to make sure that we've got this line of the top of the slope and this line of the bottom of the slope put in. We've got a guideline for the tops of the slope, so we'll just need to trace over those with a pencil. Um, and here's where I can show you another trick. If I click, instead of drawing two little lines, I'll draw one big line all the way along. See how it's actually put in a little block there? We don't, or like a little rectangle. We don't want that. So this is where you can use the eraser and just click on that line and it'll get rid of it. And we're back to normal, okay? Um, not necessarily, you could have drawn two small lines if you want, but the eraser does come in handy sometimes. Now, the bottom of the slope. We can see that it's 20 millimeters up from the bottom of the shape. So all I'm gonna do is use the tape measure, go up 20, there's the spot. We can use the pencil again, and it'll probably do the same thing where it puts in a weird, uh, just a line this time. Uh, this is probably the only time I'll let you guys, or recommend you guys that you click and drag with the rubber, because that's kind of the easiest way if you just click and drag over it. Okay, great. Now, for the slope, you might have already figured out one way to do it. Uh, there's two ways to do it, and I'm gonna show you both. The easiest way, I would say, would be to use the pencil tool or the line tool and draw a line from corner to corner, and that tells that shows us where the slope is. And then we could just use the push-pull tool. We don't want to do this one. That's not going to let us do what we want. We don't want to use this one. It's not going to let us do what we want. We want to grab that face and push it away. Done. Look at that. Alternatively, this is a way that can sometimes get messy, but it is handy if you can use it properly. This is a tool called the Move Tool. We're going to use it a lot later on, but this is sort of the introduction to it. If we grab this one here, the four arrows. Um, it's called the Move Tool. If we grab, we zoom in and grab that line. See, so it says on edge. I click that. If I move around, see how I can, you know, take this shape in whatever way I want. I want to just drag it across on the red axis. See those red dots until we get to that line. 
and it says on edge, that's it, right? Two different ways to get the same result. Um, but yeah, I personally would probably be using the move tool for that um, because I quite like using the move tool. But if you're more comfortable just drawing the pencil line in and push pulling it across, fine by me. No dramas there. All right, that looks pretty good. Angled support done. We need to edit, delete guides, file, save. Number six, angled support done. Perfect. Okay, next drawing is, oh, sorry, file new. Next drawing is an angled block. Okay, a little bit trickier, lots to do in this one, uh, but you know, we'll get through it. I'll see you in the next video.